Hello and welcome to this lesson on the simplex algorithm. For a feasible linear program in slack form, the simplex algorithm will find the optimal solution. Any linear program in slack form satisfies one of three cases. Case 1. Bounded. The feasible region is a convex hole. The objective's function has a finite optimal solution which is a vertex of the convex hole. Case 2. Unbounded. The entering variable can be increased indefinitely to produce an arbitrary large objective value. And case 3, infeasible. There is no variable setting which satisfies all constraints. A linear program is a linear function which is subject to a set of linear inequalities. In the example shown, the linear function is z equals 2x1 plus x2. The linear inequalities are x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 5. Given a linear program, we convert first to standard form and then to slack form. Shown here is the formal definition for standard form. First, let's look at the top half. This part describes the objective function. We have maximise the sum of cj by xj from j equals 1 to n. n is the number of variables in the objective function. Hence, this simply says maximise the total sum of each variable multiplied by its coefficient. Next, looking at the middle section, this describes the constraints the objective function is subject to. We have the sum from j equals 1 to n, so again this is for all variables x, j. And we also have the introduction of i equals 1 to m. Here, and again throughout, m is a number of inequality constraints. Therefore, looking at bi, bi is the basic variable, and I'll mention that in a moment, of the ith constraint. Looking now at aij, aij refers to the coefficient of variable xj in constraint i. So overall we have that the sum of products aij by xj for j equals 1 to n is less than or equal to bi or i equals 1 to m, the number of constraints. Lastly, looking at the bottom line, every variable must be subject to a non-negativity constraint, as described by xj greater than or equal to 0 for i equals 1 to n. We shall now discuss some further details about standard form. A linear program is not in standard form if any of the following are true. The objective function is a minimization and not a maximization. For example, if we have minimize minus 2x1 plus 6x2, we negate and flip the inequality to give us maximize 2x1 minus 6x2. If any of the constraints contains an equality, we form two new equations using less than or equal to and greater than or equal to, which give the same meaning. For example, if we have x1 plus 3x2 equal to 5, we write x1 and 3x2 less than or equal to 5, and x1 plus 3x2 greater than or equal to 5. We have a lack of non-negativity constraint. As stated in the standard form definition, every variable must be subject to a non-negativity, i.e. greater than or equal to 0 constraint. Here, for example, we have x plus y less than or equal to 5 but only x is subject to greater than or equal to 0. To resolve this, we set y equal to y1 minus y2, stating that y1 and y2 are greater than or equal to 0. We then substitute these for y to give us the now acceptable x plus y2 minus y1 less than or equal to 5 for x, y1, y2 greater than or equal to 0. Or we have the wrong inequality sign in which case we flip and negate so that 2x plus y greater than or equal to 7 becomes minus 2x minus y less than or equal to 7. Now to convert our standard form into slack form. Shown we have the definition of slack form. Notice that the objective function is now an equality. For each inequality, convert it to an equality by adding a surplus slack variable x prime along with its non-negativity constraint and then rearrange to make bi the subject. The slack variable measures the difference between the left-hand side and right-hand side of equation, which help us to determine how much variables can be increased without violating constraints. Some terminology. 
A basic variable is one which appears on the left-hand side of an equation. A non-basic variable is one which appears on the right-hand side of an equation. The entering variable is a non-basic variable chosen from the objective function with a positive coefficient. The leaving variable is the basic variable of the tightest constraint. Converting the constraint x1 plus 4x2 minus x3 less than or equal to 4 to slack form, we add our slack variable x4 and then rearrange to make it the subject and then add the non-negativity constraint. The simplex algorithm converts from one equivalent slack form to another as it hill walks to the optimal solution. In each iteration, first choose the entering variable xi. This is a variable in the objective function with positive coefficient, such that increasing its value will increase the objective value. Identify the leaving variable L. Increase the value of xi as much as possible without violating non-negativity constraints. The leaving variable is then the basic variable of the tightest constraint. Pivot the entering variable and the leaving variable, i.e. swap their roles. Make the entering variable the subject of the constraint. Express all other instances of the entering variable by the right-hand side of this constraint. Note now that the leaving variable is a non-basic variable. Repeat until all variables in the objective function have negative coefficients. We shall now go through a worked example from the linear program shown. Converting this into slack form, we have the following. Our non-basic variables are x1, x2 and x3. Our basic variables are x4, x5 and x6 all subject to non-negativity constraints. In each iteration, we obtain a basic feasible solution to the objective function by setting all non-basic variables to zero. At this point, our objective value is zero. Still in the first iteration, we now choose our entering variable, a variable in the objective function with positive coefficient. Choosing x1, we increase its value until a constraint becomes tight. We then pivot x1 with the basic variable of the tightest constraint. At this stage, our basic variables are x4, x5, x6. Our non-basic variables are x1, x2, x3. The entering variable is x1, and the leaving variable is x4 of equation 1. Pivoting x1 and x4, we swap the roles of the entering variable x1 and the leaving variable x4. We make the entering variable x1 the subject of the tight constraint. The leaving variable x4 becomes a non-basic variable. We replace all instances of the entering variable with its right-hand side representation. We have now obtained this new slack form. Calculating the basic feasible solution of this new form by setting the non-basic variables of the objective function to zero, we can see that the value of the objective function has increased to 25 over 2. Notice also the coefficients of x2 and x4 are negative. Beginning now the second iteration, we have only one choice for our entering variable, x3, since it is the only one with positive coefficient in the objective function. Again, we increase its value until one of the constraints becomes tight. The tightest constraint is equation 3, so we pivot x6 and x3. Pivoting x3 and x6, we swap the role of x3 our entering variable by making it the subject of the tight constraint and our leaving variable x6 becomes a non-basic variable. We replace all instances of our entering variable x3 with its right-hand side representation. Thus, we've obtained this new and equivalent slack form of a linear program. At a glance, you should be able to tell that the basic feasible solution is 13. Looking closely now at the objective function, we see that no variable has a positive coefficient, and so the simplex algorithm terminates. The basic feasible solution for this slack form is the optimal solution for the whole linear program. The objective function has an optimal value of 13 at the settings described by the vector x. A comment on time complexity. Note we consider only non-cycling variants of the simplex method. In the worst case, the number of iterations is bounded by the number of basic feasible solutions. There exist examples requiring 2 to the n minus 1 iterations for n variables and 2 to the n constraints so worst case time complexity is exponential. Despite this, empirical studies have shown that the average run times converge on a polynomial, and in practice, only 2m to 3m iterations are required.